What's going on everybody, it's Delroy and welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to continue with the ChatGPT videos. Specifically, I like to show you an experiment that I created by taking all the knowledge that we gather by using ChatGPT in our video series and basically create a ChatGPT assistant that is going to allow us to ask questions and then we're going to be basically getting answers back by converting the text that we get from the ChatGPT API into an audio source that we can play in Unity. Hello, welcome. I am Unity AI Helper powered by ChatGPT. Click on the Ask ChatGPT button and I will be more than happy to help you. Looks like I got your code from ChatGPT. Take a look at the code while I review it, please wait. This script loads a player amateur from resources every 0.5 seconds using a coroutine. It then gets the start and sets inputs component of the player and sets the move field to vector 2 with y equals 1 and y equals 0. Finally, it sets the jump field to true. Null references are avoided by using resources. The first thing that we needed to make was an HTTP call to ChatGPT API, and that goes by actually including the payload that requests information into the body and then making a post request. Once you call into the API, we're going to have to wait until we get a response back, which takes you know about two to three seconds, sometimes it takes more, but that information comes in a ChatGPT response. I also went ahead and parsed that information because I wanted to implement it in a way that I could grab the source code and also grab the explanation. So I ended up creating a little parser that grabs that information so it's easier for me to run that code or also send the explanations to the Meta Voice SDK, which is what I currently use for these videos. One of the things that I needed to do was parse the information into multiple line items. So the current maximum of a request that you can send to the Meta Voice SDK is 280 characters. So I had to split the explanations into multiple lines. So that was the only thing that I really didn't enjoy about it. So the ChatGPT tester looks like this. It includes basically a bunch of different UI components that are all referenced to the inspector. I also have a scriptable object for the actual question because that contains a lot of information that we need to pass to the ChatGPT API, a scenario title, a prompt prefix constant, which is going to be repeated multiple times. I also have the prompt in this case is to basically load an armature and then animate it. And then I also have a bunch of reminders because I wanted to make sure that this has very concise explanations because we're using the voice SDK. I didn't want to have very large explanations. Otherwise it didn't really feel very natural. That might change if I change it to use Whisper API or, or something similar to that. And then different things that I, you know, I found as issues and I'm just making sure that chat GPT remembers those. And then I just added the response back in here, the response object, which is the JSON contract to this. And then I also have an assistant here, which is the one that you guys see right here. I have a welcome message, which is going to be cached because if I run it one time, that gets cached by using that meta voice SDK. And also the transcribing in progress is a message that it's going to be, you know, provided multiple times. So the welcome, hello, welcome from the robot is going to be cash. And also when it goes back and sends another request to the Meta Voice SDK, I want to say something so that the actual, you know, the wait time doesn't feel unnatural. So that's why I ended up doing that. So if we look at the code before we look at the extension, it's broken down into multiple areas. I have a step one. This is basically an on-click event that executes an action. That action includes getting the prompt information, doing some animations to the robot, handle replacements. This is all for ChatGPT, handle reminders, and then basically displaying some information on the UI. And then this part right here is the one that actually goes to ChatGPT, gets the prompt. And then if we get a response back, this object comes back with the callback. And then I just modify a couple of things on the UI, such as the response total time, which was really important to me. And then I also grab the incoming request and I send that information to the Meta Voice SDK by using my ChatGPT assistant. And then if I have immediate compilation set up as true, then I basically compile it. If no, I just use a button that it's bound to this meta and then compiles the code. So on the ChatGPT assistant, which I thought it was really interesting to work on, this is basically the integration between the actual Meta Voice SDK. So you'll see here that I have a speaker 
that is a component from Meta. And then in here, I just am binding to different parts of the speaker events. So when the clip is loading, when the on story speaking happens, that way I can change the animation on the character. So I know when the animation, you know, the clip is getting loaded, I know that I want the character to start rolling. So I set it to true. And then when it starts speaking, I set it to false. That way the character basically opens up. So just a couple of things like that, that I had to do. And then if you go down here, speaking in chunks, this is what I had to do for the Meta Voice SDK because I needed to basically set multiple requests. So I just did an enumerator that basically gets it splits all the captions that I get from ChatGPT, and then I loop through each one of those and process them as needed. While we're not currently speaking, basically the suspense as the character is currently speaking, when the suspension ends, basically we get back into the enumerator, basically into the while loop, and then we keep processing the rest of the captions. The extension is also pretty cool because I needed to split it and also remove a couple of things from the code that got generated. So I just got a couple of things in here that I'm looking for. I'm actually getting the message here and trimming different things. I'm also applying different filters. I am replacing basically this with an empty, anything that I find because when I compile it, I don't want that to exist. And then I'm basically splitting the information based on these characters, which is for Markdown. And then at the end, I end up with the source code in this object, which is a chat GPT response. And I also have the explanations in here. So if we go and look at that object, I have the source code and the explanation, which makes it easier for me to use that information. Did you enjoy this video? Do you want to see more experiments with ChatGPT in the near future? Well, let me know in the comments because I'm always curious about what you guys are thinking. So thank you very much, guys.